All right, for those of you that have asked about the converted shop vac ozone machine, I'm finally getting around to doing the video. I apologize, it's taken me a lot longer to get to it than I had originally wanted to. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, first, it's just a rigid brand shop vac. And I know shop vac is actually a brand name, but for lack of a better term, I'm just gonna refer to this as a rigid shop vac. And it came from Home Depot. This one was either, I think, 60 or $70. Um, I don't remember the horsepower on it, but I think any of them in this price range would do okay. I've always just preferred the rigid products. Now, if you're looking to convert one of these, there's two things. First, I would highly recommend you go with the orange, more flexible hose. The hose that comes with the machine it'll work and I did use it in the beginning and this hose is kind of expensive I think this it's a kit that comes with some fittings for the end and I think it's like 30 bucks maybe maybe even a little more but this hose is much more flexible and it's much more durable so I would just go ahead and recommend getting that and second is they call this a muffler and it's originally designed to quiet the shop back down but since you're using the shop vac as more of a blower than sucking, it's still going to suck air from the outside. And at least this has some foam in here to help filter the air. Because what happens is your plates do collect uh, dirt and black stuff and you have to clean them periodically. And to clean them, you just use Q-tips and alcohol. Now, unfortunately, I didn't make sure I had alcohol and I couldn't find any, so I'm not gonna be able to do the cleaning on the video. But definitely invest in one of these uh, mufflers. I think they're about $15 to help keep your plates as clean as possible. All right, now I'm gonna show you what the inside looks like. So here's what the inside looks like. It, it's really a simple setup and design. All I did was I took a piece of plywood and I cut some notches right where the caster inserts are so I could fit it in and as you can see there's a big notch there kind of looks like a Pac-Man shape which I needed to cut to get it over this piece right here and then I took four plate and transformer setups and I screwed those down to the wood and I screwed the wood down to the bottom of the shop back originally I left the wood loose kind of with the idea that the shop vac is always going to be in this position but as it turned out to be able to fit it into the back of my truck with the bed cover I had to turn the shop vac over on its side so I didn't want the wood moving around and causing my wires to come loose so I went ahead and I bolted that down now I've bought quite a few different plates and transformers before and these that, I, that I've got in here they're the same plates and transformers and from the same, uh, I don't, not manufacturer, but from the same vendor that I bought the plates and transformers for the other ozone machines that I built myself. Now I'm going to give you a word of warning. I've bought some other plates and transformers from different places. I've ordered some even directly from China and about half of them didn't work and the ones that did work they were spotty like they would kick on and kick off so I'm gonna tell you where I got these from and you're free to buy them from wherever you want and I don't have any affiliation with this particular seller that sells these other than the fact that his place and transformers are a little more expensive but I haven't had any problems with them so I'll gladly pay a little more to have a quality product and I bought these from a seller on eBay and the name of his eBay store is Ozone Kits. And he sells he sells a few uh, ozone generators, but he mostly sells the parts. And each one of these plate and transformer setups are 10,000 milligrams per hour each. So I have a total of 40,000 milligrams per hour uh, capacity with this machine. And just so you can see, these are set up that it's two plates on top of each transformer and each plate is rated for 5,000 milligrams. 
So, like I said, 10,000 milligrams each, four of them puts out 40,000 milligrams. The wiring on these, I'm not 100% sure that it matters with these. You may be able to wire them up either way, whereas these particular transformers have a red and a green wire. I'm assuming that red is hot and green is ground, and that's the way I wired these up, and they work just fine. But I've seen other people wire transformers up that have the same color wire on both sides. And, you know, one doesn't have a stripe or anything. They're just both the same color. So it may not matter. Maybe it matters. I don't know. With these particular transformers, I treat the red as a hot and the green as a ground. And it's worked just fine. So all I did was I wired all the transformers together. And I ran them to the switch that was already in the shop back to turn it on and off. And I just sealed it up with some RTV silicone right here just to try to keep any ozone out of there. So it's really a simple process. You can see these screws right here. Those are the ones that I took off to remove this piece and wire those into the switch. It's really, really easy to do. I'm not sure it's necessary to use wood in the bottom, but wood was an easy thing to use. And, you know, ozone gets a wrap for it being degrading to rubber and plastic and things like that but I want to say something and obviously the shell of the shop vac is plastic and you can see there's no degradation of any of the plastic and it's fairly thin plastic when you realize that you can see straight through it and there's been no degradation at all likewise every ozone generator that I own has a plastic case and there's been no degradation of that stuff either. So while I'm not saying that ozone is great for plastic or rubber, I'm saying I don't think that that fear is necessarily something you need to worry about. But basically, this is a very simple machine to build, and it's a very versatile machine. Now, I didn't come up with this idea. I've seen someone else use these before, and there's actually a company that sells them that's already converted. The problem is they're about $1,000. These ozone plates and transformers, I paid $70 a piece for each one. So you're looking at about $280 in plates and transformers and another 60 or 70 for the shop vac and 30 for the hose. So I've got about $100 into the shop vac and 280 into the plates and transformers. So you're looking at just under four, well, probably about $400 with tax. But this machine is so versatile that there's really nothing else like it out there. So if you're looking to do automobiles, this is a great machine. And if you don't plan on doing but one or two vehicles at, say, a dealership or something like that, this machine would really be all you needed to do that because you're able to treat the ambient air by running the hose into the window and you're able to treat surfaces by directly applying the ozone to all the surfaces, to the seat fabric, underneath the seat, and pretty much everywhere. And then again, if you're doing houses or apartments with this, you can use positive pressure with the hose to get ozone up onto like popcorn ceilings, above cabinets, in cabinets, on the side of refrigerators, pretty much anywhere that you may be worried that when you treat it, the ambient ozone might not get. So this machine is great. It's an indispensable machine for me. So if you're looking to build one, there you go. It's easy. It's, I don't wanna say affordable at $400, but it's a less than half the price of trying to buy one that's already converted. And if you wanna get into the odor removal business, I highly recommend a machine like this. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.